I mean, it's, you know, doing it yourself. I love the story about minor thread, like look, taking it apart at 45 and looking at it and figuring out how they glued them all together and cutting them out, but like a thousand of them by hand. They made like envelopes and glued them shut by hand, you know, <laughs> because they didn't know you could just have some printer just go and make them and stuff. And that's, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> the hippies were more radical than the punks. The punks spouted a lot of uh, anarchy stuff, but a lot of the hippies, they got crazy, you know. There was a weather underground and the SLA and all kinds of crazy shit going on, you know, way more than most of the punks. You know, I, I, I'm not too much for the whole anarchy bit of uh, punk rock, but there's a whole sort of a thread that runs through art with a anarchy I guess all the way back to the Dadas. <laughs> so from that angle I appreciated the chaos. I took my sister to see the Dead Kennedys in 1978 or 9 and she was kind of panic stricken in the balcony of the whiskey thinking that she was going to be in the middle of a riot because <laughs> it was like such chaos. <laughs> wave is just like schmaltzy pop music, like modern pop music from that era, and punk is a whole uh, lifestyle and, you know, rebellious and counterculture and all kinds of stuff, and the other one was just trendy filler. Yeah. You know, two totally different animals. Got, they, the fact that they get lumped together is ludicrous. The Hong Kong Cafe opened up. Like outside in the courtyard in that old part of Chinatown at night when it was dark and a whole bunch of punks all wandering around and just like wildness going on upstairs. It was just a fucking great environment. It was really fun hanging out there. And then there was the Atomic Cafe that had this bitchin' old neon sign and I'm not a fan of much neon but it was on the corner of First and Alameda. It's a senior fish now that looks like uh, they had all kinds of punk rock records on the jukebox and stuff. And actually, I did a fractured multiple image of the facade after I, I pasted a bunch of my cool flyers up in the window. They used to have a bunch of punk flyers and the dead candidates and the bags and stuff were on the jukebox. It was really cool. <laughs> Rex on the goddamn commercial they had in the market, I was like, no! Yeah. It like made me want to cry. Radio. I listen to what I want to hear all day long in my own detail. I don't want to hear some DJ like melting all the time. Yeah. You know, or like 40 minutes of commercials or whatever. Yeah, that's what I don't <laughs> yeah. want to hear. Yeah. No commercials come into my home environment. Yeah, it's my home environment is super important to me. You know, I spend a lot of time here, but I want it to be a pleasant place. I always yeah. kind of basically say it's uh, my commentary on uh, politics, religion, and the demise of the American dream, which I've been witnessing basically my whole life. the advent of photography because it made artists do abstractions and uh, you know, they no longer were required to do portraits and stuff yeah. like that. A camera did it better and quicker, yeah. you know, and uh, so they them. started, you know, wow. so stuff started happening outside <coughs> of like renderings and uh, stuff like that and portraiture <laughs> with painting. So, you know, that's kind of to me when modern art would have, you know, started. I'd go to two shows a night sometimes. I went to a thousand shows that I figure at least because I was out at least five nights a week for five years. You know, I'd see Fear on a Tuesday. And the Gun Club on Wednesday. And, uh, 
Hicks and the Blasters on Thursday. And Circle Jerks and TSOL on Friday. Don't follow my footsteps. <laughs> <laughs>